It is an exciting day for Nintendo fans that are also iPhone users because we now have an official emulator app that you can download straight from the iOS app store, no jailbreaking, no side loading, no kind of modifications or even advanced technical know-how required to run this thing because due to a recent terms of service update from Apple, emulators are now officially supported within their app store. And I'll also be sharing some news late into the video that does reveal that, yeah, we're gonna get a lot more consoles than what we have today but in this video we are specifically talking about delta which will let you run nes snes n64 game boy game boy color game boy advance and nintendo ds games on your ios device natively through rom files and i'm also going to be walking through not only how you set this up get all of your games and everything set up for use but also what kind of controllers this thing support because if you have nso controllers or if you have a pro controller even your ps5 controller you're going to be able to use it within this application fairly easily from syncing them up through bluetooth and there's a lot of really cool exciting possibilities for iphone users so we'll unpack all of that before we do make sure you like subscribe and turn on your bell notification to join some nation if you're new here and i want to kick it off by going into the app store together directly on my device i have not set this app up fully myself but i do have a decent understanding on how to do it from watching other people online and really as mentioned it's not going to be hard to find just search delta or hard to set up rather just search delta in your app store uh, not the airlines app but rather the the second one that will pop up after the paid ad is indeed the, the Delta game emulator. Now, this has been an emulator that's actually been around for a long time, but it's only now being added into the official app store. And initially, you're going to see you have no games. Now, I will not be showing you exactly how to download the ROMs, but a little quick Google search will probably reveal how to do that for you. And rather, I do have some ROMs that have been set up already from a file folder for my PC that I just moved over to my iCloud drive. Now, you you can do this directly on the phone if you would like. If you do have a PC that maybe you have some ROMs on already and you'd rather bring those over, it's not hard to get the extension to go ahead and allow your PC to use or even Mac to use your iCloud drive and just create a new folder called ROMs in your file system, bring over that library of games, and then from there you will select files from the plus button in terms of the ones that you want to bring over. And I am going to go ahead and bring over every single one. So if you hit select all, this has already found my, my games files because it's just looking for those ROM files. So it went straight to the correct place. So I'm going to select all and hit open. Now, because mine are currently in the cloud, it will take just a little bit for them to actually download and populate. And once they do, a lot of the artwork comes in automatically for whatever reason, the NES library of games did not uh, but if you want to get artwork for a game that did not pop over correctly you press and hold for just a moment and you will select game library or game database rather it rather is the easiest one that i've found and if i want to find the dr mario box art i'm just going to search uh dr mario i started to type box there because i was saying the word box and it literally it's as easy as that now granted this is actually the um the nes and i selected the game boy box art but you can go back in and rechange these as needed so really nice and user friendly on that front and you can see every system is categorized on its own page and it's just as simple as sliding left to write in order to uh, set this up. So I will first show you what it's like just to hop into a game and you do have these um, pre-selected skins that you can go ahead and choose from. Um, now you can get different skins. I'll have a website linked in the description down below on how you can do that as well uh, because if you want to customize it more you can um, as well as I will show this in landscape mode because that's m mostly how I would uh, end up playing this. And I wonder if I need to do that on a separate recording for the ease of use, uh, probably doesn't matter too much. But anyway, I have it initially set up with just the default controls and everything works out great. Um, now, uh, in terms of, of how you go in and customize these things, you can go into settings and change things around as you see fit. So for example, if you hit the menu button on screen, uh, you can have save state, load state, cheat codes, uh, fast forward, uh, hold down button settings like that. I'm going to go back to main menu and we are just right back out of the emulator at that point. Now, we also have a lot of different customization options. If you want to be a different player, you can assign that here. The controller skins are all um, listed as their corresponding system. And again, this is where you can go in and select and change which kind of skin you want to go ahead and have for each said game. 
same in both uh, portrait mode and landscape mode. You can change the opacity for how much you want the controller to be on screen as far as it being visible. If you want it very transparent, you can bring that way down. Um, you can basically have it respect silent mode. It'll only play game audio uh, if you actually have your phone not on silent. So that's something that if a lot of people are starting this up and saying there's no audio, that's probably because that's enabled and you don't want it to be enabled uh, if your phone is in silent and you want to hear uh, the music. So that is something to keep in mind. Now, outside of these settings, I want to then next demonstrate how you can go ahead and sync up one of your Nintendo Switch online controllers, which I will be using the SNES one for the purpose of this video. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get this into Bluetooth pairing mode by pressing and holding the sync button. And then I'm going to search for it on my device. And you can see SNES controller is popped up as an available thing that I can connect to. And from here, I can go in back to the to the um, said emulator and we will go to Donkey Kong Country 2 and once this boots up I should in theory now have full control of the game right with the SNES controller I mean absolutely flawless no button mapping or anything like that that I even have to set up here it's all just going to work exactly as I want it to so you can see from this camera I'm currently controlling my character as I'm looking down here uh, to to play Donkey Kong Country 2 and it is just incredible the lack of latency I mean how responsive it is it definitely feels like a native gameplay experience like you're plugged into a the classic console and there's a lot of fun things going on with this emulator right now there's still some missing features um, that we will talk about briefly as we play one of my favorite 2D platformers of all time, which is Donkey Kong Country 2, um, such as the lack of like widescreen support and things like that. Seems like right now, four by three aspect ratio is more or less what you're locked to, but there will be continuous updates to this emulator application. And I would expect rather soon to see some of those missing features uh, be alleviated. So this is definitely a quality emulator to pick up and I would uh, highly recommend it and definitely say just the ease of use for Bluetooth controller support and things like that is really impressive. Um, now I will also demonstrate once we're done with the touch controller, if I turn that off, I should get my default controller back, which I will then press menu and go back uh, to the main menu. And the last couple things to demonstrate here um, will be the DS topic, which this is a little bit different. So every other system you want to play just works with the ROM files. You will see that you are missing DS files that are required for you to play the Nintendo DS. Now, this is another step that I'm not going to show you exactly how to do, but if you look into the files that you need for this online, do some quick Google searches out there, you will be able to quickly find the DS BIOS files that you need to actually enable DS gameplay. That's going to be a big thing for a lot of people who are looking to play the classic Pokemon era games from the DS. So you're going to want to set this up, but there is that additional resource you have to go through with the DS uh, BIOS files. Once you have the files on your phone, it's just as simple as telling the emulator where the file is at, and then they it will remember it past that. And there's some really cool things here that you will see, like for AirPlay, for example, if you want to AirPlay a DS game to your TV and you want to show the top display only on the external display, you have the option to do the touch screen on your phone and the main image on the TV screen. A really cool way to experience classic DS games. So really nice options that we see the Delta emulator support out of the gate. And as mentioned, it will continue to get updated as time goes on. And I also want to briefly talk about that this application is available on tablets as well. So you can play it on a bigger screen, but from what I can see so far, it is not natively upscaled to the tablet display. So it looks like one of those iOS apps that's meant for a phone in terms of how it looks and plays, but it will be available on a larger display. I'm assuming they will probably get a native version of the app out for the tablet relatively soon. At the time of filming, I have not seen that support hit just yet. But in terms of the future of emulators on iOS, OS, the possibilities are really endless. The floodgates are now open and we're already seeing reports that there will be additional major emulators coming over. As you can see a post from Mac Rumors, which reads PlayStation, GameCube, Wii and Sega emulator for iPhone and Apple TV coming to App Store. So think about having the option to sync up any controller via Bluetooth to your Apple TV and playing them on your TV device. Then you can also hop over and play them on your phone on the go. Not to mention there are features in the Delta app to 
actually help your save data and everything seamlessly transfer over for whichever device you are playing on. So lots of fun possibilities to come for iOS and emulators in the future. Let me know in the comments down below if you intend on checking this out yourself and which emulators you hope we see make it over next to iOS because I cannot wait for Dolphin to be there, especially on something like a iPhone 15 Pro Max, like what I'm running, it really is, it has an impressive amount of processing power, so you should be able to get nice up res options and everything from a mobile perspective or even your Apple TV if you own that. So really cool time for emulation support. So let me know all your thoughts and feelings around this in the comments down below before you leave the video, as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics. Go watch the video on screen next if you haven't already. Also make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.